Hi, welcome to video tutorial number 15 for Art 1383, Introduction to New Media. This is Fine Tuning Groove. Today we are going to get the information on Groove. Um, in our patcher that we've been working on with the three main sounds, we got the Super Duper Sampler Patcher working the other day, so let's click it open and take a look at it. Is it still working? It is. But we have some things to do here. If you'll notice, like if you hold the A down, it just kind of plays and stops. What kind of fun is that? So let's clean this patcher up a little bit and unlock it. Take all of this stuff and move it over here where it'll be mostly out of our way and I think this stuff could be moved as well maybe we'll stick it here just kind of wedge it in there somewhere and um, we're gonna leave uh, leave old uh, buffer Ted over there because we, we like him to be over there Okay, so <clears throat> what we don't have working over here is that uh, we don't have the loop working. And I had previously mentioned this loop one and loop zero thing. So let's uh, lock the patcher down and find out what they do. So here's, here's uh, I'm just going to play the, the uh, D on my, on my uh, keyboard. And it ends. If I hit loop one, then you can see that it um, it just loops. It goes around and it loops. And then if I hit it again, but it sounds terrible. And if you're going to do any sampling you need to find a way to deal with that. Now you could adjust every single sample um, by going down here. Uh, let's unlock our patcher and take a real close look at what's going on here. On Groove there's a loop minimum and a loop come on there you go a loop maximum and when you loop that means you're selecting a certain point along the you know, I'm going to lock it and double click it so I can have the the uh, device here. Then you set like a minimum point for a loop and a maximum point and it keeps replaying it. But you would have to set that very carefully to get rid of the that little clicky noise. There's an easier way to do it and that is unlock your patcher, get a new object called the info tilde and then our info is of course going to be on Ted. Now um, I am going to go back to stealing as I like to do. Um, let's option click on info Ted and get this window here. Okay. Um, let's unlock it and we're going to bring all of this down into our patcher control copy I mean command copy close the window get rid of info Ted goodbye info Ted and paste and let's move this thank goodness we cleaned up because we need it we need the space so now we have our info thing here. I think we can get rid of some of this nonsense over here. Um, this one's kind of nice to have though. I'm just going to move it down here. Okay. And let's go in here because we want ours to be named Ted and change it back to Ted. Hello. There we go. Ted. All right. And what. Um, uh, info Ted will tell us, oops, 
I cut the button off. I knew there was something I needed to do. Type letter B. Let's put a button on there. Okay, so if you lock your patcher and now hit this button, bingo. It tells you what the sampling rate is on TED, it tells you the basic frequencies, it tells you the sustain loop, it tells you lots and lots of stuff. But the really cool thing that it tells you is when you should uh, let's stretch this out here. How did I do that? This got smaller. Let's make this big so we can see what number is going to what box. There we go. So let's zoom in here. One of the things, one of the things that it tells you is the sustain loop start and the sustain loop end. And these two numbers for this particular for this particular sample are the numbers that you want to feed in as the minimum and maximum point. So if you can click on the bottom of this and get it over to the minimum point on Groove and then click on this one. They're kind of all jumbled over each other so sometimes you have to move stuff around a little bit. Come on. There it is and this one goes to the maximum point whenever um, you change the buffer you'll just have to hit this little thing and it'll tell you what's in there now if we load a new let's actually do it so we can understand what's going on. Well, let's make sure it works. How's that for a for an idea? We'll get our we'll get our info for Ted and now um let's let's let's, let's listen to what a loop sounds like suddenly. See? That info at Ted really knows what it's doing. But let's just say that we read a new thing into Ted such as uh, the vibes because we know that they're going to be an A1 so we'll open those up and now we'll play again oh uh oh sounds terrible click on the button suddenly it sounds great so what we want to do is trigger this after every time we load a new sample into it and if you unlock your patcher, there's an easy way to do that, which is um, if you look over here on the buffer TED, I'm always zoomed in a little bit too much. There we go. Bang when file read operation complete. So let's utilize that to send out, oops, wrong thing. I don't want that. I want a new object, a send um, buffer done. And then I'm just going to option click on this to get a receive buffer done. And the reason I'm doing that is I like to keep my buffers separate, um, unconnected by wires to anything, because and for very good reason that we'll find out later. And I also like to keep my receive objects up near the top so that when I open my patchers, I know there's something up there that's receiving. It's not coming in as an inlet, but it's receiving it. So that's going to, every time we change something now in TED, it's going to tell info that it's updated, and then it will um, 
make our loop work nicely. Um, however, we have to be able to turn our loop on and loop off. So let's make a receive object for them too. Let's uh, option click on this and say receive loop receive loop select and then we'll have to um, have it also have it we'll have to make it a new object select uh, one and uh, that way when we send this it's going if it's a one it's going to select loop on boy it's getting tough to get in there isn't it these wires there's loop one so it'll bang on loop one and if it's anything else it will turn the loop off because sometimes we don't want a loop not always do we want things looping there we go and uh, we'll put we'll put a receive uh, excuse me a send loop select out in our main patcher as well as a send um, for the buffer as well so um, what we're trying to do is get this uh, patcher all spiffed up and ready to go and stand on its own. Um, another nice thing that info does is down here it spits out base frequency MIDI pitch. Now 45 is a MIDI number and if we let's let's load the uh, let's load that F2 again and see the cello F2 see that F2 on there okay we've opened it it went bang we know it went bang because down here it has a little thing that says the name of the most recently loaded file and there it is cello F2 and now we look over here and we see a 53 which strangely to me does not say cello f2 but let's let's just check it we'll put in a number box and we'll make the display format midi and we'll connect them together and see uh, lock your patcher and just hit bang again and it should say it's actually F3 interesting they may have mis mislabeled it I'm gonna put one over here and just uh, do a little checking because this should be quite accurate and not saying the wrong numbers hit bang again hmm. well there you go um, <laughs> I think they they labeled it wrong, the uh, the cello piece, because info knows what things are, so we're gonna connect the bottom of this up here. We're gonna run it all the way back up here to. this little number here. So now <clears throat> every time we change the sample that we have in Groove, Info is going to look at it. It's going to give us our looping points and it's going to tell us what the frequency of that is. And it's automatically going to output it and it will become the denominator in this division problem setting our signal automatically to the precisely correct uh, number so that it will get um, the number the uh, the sample will come out as it's supposed to be 
Holy heck, I am super excited about this. Let's just see if it works. <laughs> It's not absolutely perfect, that loop, but it's not bad. Um, let's read a different sound into the buffer. Um, we'll go back to vibes again. Let's see if down here <clears throat> it's realized that it's loaded vibes. It says it's A2. And by the way, <laughs> look at that, vibes, A1. And it says it's A2. I don't know. Who do you believe? The person who labeled the sample or info? I'm going to believe info myself because they're both off by one. It must mean something. So let's see how the vibes sound. Or if we decide not to listen to it with the loop. <laughs> Not so good with uh let's let's play it at zero. I can't even do it anymore. Oh, that's because I'm not holding a key. Hmm. Well there you go. So it turns on the uh loop to the so if you've got the info on, it's going to set the it's going to set those loop levels. So probably if you want to play non-looped you would have to figure out a way to turn these back to zero and one. Um, I think that's beyond us for, for today, but we have a great uh, looping sound. All right, fantastic. And now we're going to do one other thing here, and that is uh, unlock the patcher, take one of these take one of these and connect it to this outlet over here and it's monophonic so you can just delete the other one and now we have our sound out over here We've got our velocity in I'm gonna copy uh, oh sorry there is one other important thing I mentioned that I don't like having uh, the buffers over here and I'll tell you why right now um, I'm going to duplicate them, and then I'm going to take them out. Um, sometimes you like to switch back and forth between buffers, and so let's make this buffer another buffer called Fred. Fred and Ted. Okay, buffer Fred. All right, and then we're going to make two more message objects. One set Ted and I bet you can already guess what the other one is set Fred sounds a little like a Dr. Seuss book here um, and we need these to um, reach reach our groove object as well it gets it gets pretty crowded over here sometimes so uh, I will just we'll just wire them from up here why why make it too difficult okay all the way down to the groove object in the left inlet there you go and then one other thing which is you want your info to be tracking the same thing as the buffer that's playing, so we're going to go from set Ted down to the info object and set Fred down to the info object. Lock your patcher. Let's uh, set it to Ted. Make sure everybody's working here. Oh, <laughs> I put the output uh, just momentarily. I'm going to bring that uh, bring that easy deck back because uh, I want to do a quick test here there we go nothing fancy 
is the easy DAC on? It is. There we go. Let's read something into buffer Fred. Uh, something we haven't used yet. Cherokee. Okay. And we play. Sounds the same. That's because we're playing our groove, which is named Ted, and it's going to our buffer named Ted. But if we set our groove to Fred, it will play our buffer named Fred. Very exciting. And then if we set it back to Ted, fantastic. And now I'll show you why um, I wanted to um, keep these out of here, and that is this. We'll unlock it, and let's cut them out of here. Uh, that's Command X. And we'll close this window. Um, and we'll put it, uh, we'll open, unlock this patcher and paste it in. Um, <clears throat> you may remember that in our super duper cycler, I'm just going to click it open real quickly. Oops, I'm going to lock my patcher and click it open very quickly. There are six um, instances of super cycler. That, I mean in our super duper cycler. So in our, oh, <laughs> I, I, I messed up, we'll have to have a super galooper sampler. If we're going to make multiple instances of the super sampler, which we want to do because look, we can only play, um, um, oh, I moved my buffers outside and now I'm just not happy about them, okay. Let's read something in there. There we go. And read something in this one. Vibes. Open. Okay. Nice. Okay. But we only have one voice here. And if we want to do the same thing and use six of these, we certainly don't want six buffers. So I want to keep the buffers outside of the noisemakers, if you will. So let's, um, how do we do that? Um, that part where we make this into a new object, we're going to make a patcher. First we have to make a patcher out of it, and then we'll open it as a sub patcher. So click this open, uh, make sure it's unlocked, uh, command everything, copy it, and open up a brand new patcher, and paste it in there. And uh, I'm going to maximize it just to make sure that everything in here is sort of the way we imagine it. Yeah, it's everything that we, we wanted in here. And um, we're going to save this. Uh, I, I get to save myself in this. We're going to save this as the super sampler. And we're going to make sure that, um, where's our Google Drive? There it is. Max Patchers, teaching Patchers. Let's make sure there's no super sampler down there. We've got the super cycler, but no super sampler. So there, we save it as the super sampler. And we put it away. And then we can do the same thing to this as we did to this, which is set it up with a, um, a uh, poly object in it. So we can take all this actually and throw it away. That just seems crazy, but heck, I'll do it. So in the super duper sampler, we want an inlet and another inlet. 
we want a poly object um, six voices again yes and this will be the pitch and velocity coming in here I like to have the number boxes there I also like to have things as far to the left as I can because I tend to fill them up. And then um, this will come into this side. This will come into this side. That's going to be the voice number, pitch, and velocity. And so what we're going to do again, if you don't remember from the last time, is pack those into a 0, 0, 0. This is kind of a review. Those of you who already know how to do this, you could uh, go do something else for a while. And there it is. And then we're going to use the spray object type n, type spray, type 6, uh, an offset of 1 we discovered on the last one which will make our voice 1 come out uh, outlet 1 instead of outlet 0 and then type another 1 and that's to make it handle lists because we can never remember that and then the moment you've all been waiting for we type n for new object and we just type super sampler super sampler and look at that max sees it we are famous we're in the max program now we've got our super sampler object and we can put one on each of these outlets um, what if we did it this way? Whoops. <laughs> there we go. I don't think we need to be neat here. It's just my theory. Very exciting. And then let's lock our patcher and just see if we've got um, numbers coming in. We don't. Let's go figure out why. Oh, because we haven't hooked it up. That's why. Because we changed something. Oh, we deleted all of our inputs. That's why. And then. Uh, the wires disappeared too. Now just to... a lot of times when you create new things you have to reread stuff into them so let's get our um, applications, max, let's load some sounds into those things examples, sounds I don't know what it is, but sure, I'll load it. And what about you, Fred? Sounds, vibes, stick with something we know there. And see, we'll select three here and see if it plays. No. And we'll figure out why. We've got numbers coming in. We've got things spraying out. Let's open up the super sampler and figure out what is not happening. Uh, it's not receiving a velocity number. And I'm sure I did something wrong. Um, X 
here. So it's got uh, this goes in, that comes out, this goes here. Oh, of course, I'm sorry. Hey, look at that. There's our mistake. My mistake. My mistake, people. My mistake. Um, let's open the super sampler. And um, we're going to edit one. And that means we're going to edit the whole thing. Um, because it's going to become the real super sampler here. And I know I've done this before. There we go. Um, the problem is that um, we could do one of two things. We could stick a, an unpack object above every super sampler. I guess that's what we'll do. Here, we'll close the super sampler. Um, Let's just stick an unpack object over each one of them. It'll just be easier. Type n unpack 0 space 0. Sorry, this uh, today's video is turning into a much longer ordeal than I, than I expected it was going to. And we'll put one of these over every super sampler. Because uh, I forgot that the number coming out of there needs to be unpacked. And we move this up to each one of these. And then we connect the unpack symbol to this. And now we can be fairly certain that nothing will work, but we can always hope. a lot of wait time. You could just pause the video, but there's no reason to. Okay, there it is. Lock it, and let's see what happens. Wow. What in earth is going on? Super. Oh, it might be the sound of that, um, that one buffer. So let's... Uh, Close the close the super duper sampler and uh, read something else into Ted like the cello and see if that sounds better. Yes. There, very good. However, um, I realized that the looping is not on, so we're going to open the old super sampler again and unlock it. And it's going to tell you that it doesn't like it, but we want to turn uh, the looping on. Um, select one, loop one. Da, da, da. Oh, because we've never sent it anything. Hey, look, I forgot to copy this. All we have to do is copy, loop select there, control clap, copy. Let's close this thing. Close this thing. Unlock this patcher and paste our object in there. It came out all the way up there on the keyboard. Now I'm going to change this to a send. And it's either going to send a 0 or a 1 if I stick a, to a toggle on it. So let's see how that works. Uh, are we locked? We're locked. Let's try turning the loop on. 
Oh, beautiful. Wow. So that was a lot for today, but we really fine-tuned the super duper sampler and now we have our piano, we have our electronica, and we have our our sampler, which we can read any sound file into. So that's it. Amazing. I am going to be back with one more thing about getting sampled file files and that's how to record them in the next video but thanks for sticking in there with fine-tuning groove I will talk to you later